All right, so in this video, I'll be taking you through a simple modeling exercise where we'll be creating a low poly office room. So before I get started, I'll make sure to enable my screencast keys just so that you can see exactly what I'm doing in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. So we can start off by deleting our default cube by pressing X and deleting. Then I'll press shift A and then a mesh and a plane. So this will be for the floor of our room. And what we can do is just scale up. We can scale this up by pressing S and five like so. And then what we can do is add in some walls. So to add in the walls, we can select our mesh and then press tab to go into edit mode. Then what we can do is go into edge select mode. We can go up to the top here and click edge select, or we can press the number keys on our keyboard. So one is for vertices, two is for edge select and three is for faces. So I'll be flickering around uh, these three options throughout the video. So I'll go into edge select mode, select this edge here with right click and then shift select the second edge here. And then what I can do is press E to extrude. However, I want to lock the movement of our um, edges to the Z axis. So I can just press the Z key and I can bring it up like so. I'll press G and Z to bring it up a little bit further. And I think that's good. So to add in some thickness to our walls, what we can do is extrude this all inwards. So to do that, I can press A and then E. However, this isn't uh, exactly what we want. We want the walls to scale in kind of evenly. So there's a better way to do that. So I'll just press Control and Z a few times. And what we need to do is press Alt and E and we can press extrude faces along normal. And as you can see, it brings all of the faces as I slide my mouse uh, up and down. So to enable even, even thickness, all we need to do is press S on our keyboard. And as you can see, the, uh, the walls are now evenly um, extruded inwards. So I'll pull it into something like this. And we have the basic setup for our room. So the first thing we're going to add in our room is a desk. What I can do is press shift A and add in the cube. And this will be the basis of our um, of our desk. So I'll, I will use my tilde, key, my tilde key to go into right view. And then I'll drag it up like so. Go into front view using my tilde key again. Uh, if you don't know, the tilde key is the button above the tab button. Uh, since I don't have a numpad, I have to use this to go to switch between different views. Uh, after a while, you'll get used to it. So anyway, I'll just position it uh, like so. And we can go into edit mode once more to kind of build out our desk. So I'll press tab to go into edit mode. And then what I'll do is press S and X to scale it on the X axis. And the next thing I'm going to do is have a little area or, you know, a fairly sizable area for where uh, the worker's legs will go. So to do that, we can press control R to add in an edge loop. And as you can see, we have a yellow outline of our edges that we're going to add in. So I will press left click to confirm my choice and to leave it in the middle. All I need to do is press the right click button. Okay. Um, if I want to have more, more than one um, edge loop, what I can do is actually split this middle edge loop so that we have it so that we have edge loops symmetrically placed on our cube. So I'll press control B and this enables bevel. And then I will drag it out until I'm happy with the size of it like so. So one thing I'll be doing a lot of is modeling like lots of different separate objects. And sometimes the other objects in the 3D viewports get in the way of that. So what I can do is just select my object and press the forward slash key on my keyboards to go into isolated view mode. So this makes it much easier to just focus on one single object so that I can kind of edit it without anything else getting in the way. Anyway, I'll go back into edit mode and what I can do is just delete uh, this face, these faces here. Oh, we, but before we do that, we need to kind of make a top lip for the, for the desk. So I'll press control R once again, and I'll drag it up like so. And then what we can do is extrude all of these faces around the rim here. And to select an edge loop, what you need to do is press the alt key and right click. 
And as you can see, all of the faces around um, on this cube has been selected. So then I can press Alt E once again to bring up the extrude menu. And then I will select extrude faces along normals. Okay. And then when you hold down shift, it kind of slows down your movement. So without shift, things kind of scale out quite quickly. But if I hold down shift, it's a more gradual move. Then once again, I will press S to enable kind of the uh, even thickness. And I think that is something that I'm happy with. Actually, let me undo that. And I'll do it again, Alt E. Something a bit more subtle is uh, what I'm looking for. All right. And then to go back to creating the space underneath the table, what I can do is select this face here, shift select this face and this back face here. I'll press X to delete and then delete faces. And you can see that we have this uh, nice gap underneath the table. So um, typically like these faces are going to be filled in. So we can do that right now by going into edge select by pressing two and then selecting these edges here. I'll press F to fill. And as you can see, it's created a face. So if we want to quickly fill the rest of these faces here, we can select all of the edges and kind of repeat our process. However, a quicker way is selecting this edge here. And when you have like enclosed faces or enclosed edges um, in your mesh, you can just press the F key and Blender will kind of follow along that path automatically for you. So just try that out, press the F key and it should fill in these spaces here. Okay, so we have a very basic basic desk. However, I want to add a bit more design flair to it. So what I can do is actually have this right-hand side here be for some cabinets or drawers. Um, so to do that, I will go into edit mode once again. And I want to select all of these faces here on the, le on the right-hand side or the left-hand side of this part, I guess. And what I can, I can do that by um, pressing one on my keyboard to enable vertex select and then press B for box select. Now, if I click and drag, you'll see that I've selected all of these faces here. However, when I actually move them by pressing G, you'll notice that I actually haven't selected all of the faces at the back either. So whenever we're doing, um, whenever we're trying, it will be useful to use X-ray mode or no, wireframe mode. So X-ray mode can be enabled by pressing our Z key and go into wireframe. I think I mixed that up, but uh, yeah, to enable wireframe mode, you uh, press your Z key and you can choose wireframe. So I'll go back to solids and to enable X-ray mode, which is kind of a blend between wireframe and X-ray mode, you just press Alt and Z. And then when I box select by pressing B, or you don't even need to press B, you can just hold down on your middle mouse button, like so. You can see that I've selected all of the face even behind, or all of the vertices even behind the, um, the mesh. Okay, so I'll press G and X to move over the uh, this part of the desk so that we have more space for the cabinets. Then what I'll do is press Control R to add in a, another edge loop. And then to add in two edge loops, what I can do is scroll up on my mouse wheel ever so slightly, just so that we have another division within our, uh, within our selection. And then I'll press right click to leave it in the center. And now we have a little, um, we have the basis to create our, our draws. So to create our draws, what I can do is select these faces here by shift selecting all of the faces. Then I'll press I to inset. However, when we inset a face, uh, typically if I just do that with one face here, you'll see that all the faces are drawn into one spot. Um, however, when we select multiple, you can see that they're all drawn into the center point. However, we want individual uh, insets on each of them However, we want them to be done at the same time. So the way we can do this is by selecting all of the faces once again, pressing I to inset, and then I once more. And that's how we can inset uh, multiple faces at the same time, however, on their own individual like origins. So I'll press I to inset a little bit. And then what I can do is extrude the same words like so. And then I will press I to inset even more subtly. 
and then press E to extrude and have the this face poking out a tiny bit. You know what, even a bit more. So I'll press G and Y to bring it out like so. All right. And then what we can do to add in a bit more um, design, I guess, a bit more detail to our desk is to add in some handles. So we can do this by pressing Control R, which will add an edge loop um, in the center of this section here. And then what I'll do is actually go to top view and I will press S and X to scale it down. And then I'll type in zero just so that this whole edge loop here is flat. For some reason, our faces here, like all across the, um, the desk aren't actually straight. So you can see that it kind of bends here. So I can just fix that by selecting these faces here. So I'll select this face and I'll show you a quick shortcut, which I use all the time. So I'll select this face here and then control click this face here, which gives, which selects all of the faces in between picking the shortest path. Then I will press S, Y and zero to scale that completely flat on the Y axis. And then I will do the same for the, uh, the other side of the table. Okay. Now to continue with our handles of the cabinet, I will go into edge select by pressing two. I will alt click this middle uh, edge loop here. And then what I can do is press control B to bevel. And I will leave this around here. And then what we can do is add in the handles by first adding in edge loops across each of our individual cabinet drawers. So I'll press control R, control R, and then right click to leave it in the center and control R once more. I will, so now we've got one edge loop selected. To select multiple edge loops, what we need to do is hold down the shift button and press shift alt right click, shift alt right click. So we have all three of these edge loops selected. Then what I can do is press G and Z to bring it up on the Z axis. And now to make part of the handle, what I can do is, well, I guess what I can do is press control B to bevel it once more. And then select these faces here, one, two, three, extrude it inwards like so. So we've got one part of the handle. And typically uh, there's a there's a uh, another section just so that you can actually grab onto it because imagine trying to stick your fingers in here, you wouldn't be able to latch onto anything. So what we can do, whoops, go into front view, is tab into edit mode once more, press control R, and select these top faces here, and then press E and extrude that in. All right, so we have pretty much finished the first part of um, our office. I'll press the four sass key to see how that looks in our room. Looks amazing. And what we can do is actually add in a bevel modifier. So this is um, something new that you may not have encountered, the modifiers tab. So what we can do is go to add modifier and select bevel. This will add a tiny bit more detail to our, um, to our object. And we can actually increase the segments which gives us a more smooth, which gives us a more smooth effect on our desk. However, since this takes up computational power, uh, for now we can press this TV icon, which will disable in the viewport mode. However, when we render it, it will still be uh, enabled. So that's just something to remember. All right, so we can continue building the office by creating a monitor for our desk. So what I can do is left click to position my 3D cursor onto the desk. And then I can press Shift A, add in a mesh and plane. So this will be for the base of our monitor. So I'll tab into edit mode and scale it down like so. All right, so I'm going into top view and I will scale it on the X axis. And then we can extrude it up by pressing E 